Hi, I'm Holly from Keto Chow, and this is Chef Taffy, and today we're making gingerbread cookies. Gingerbread cookies, which I'm pretty excited about. I am too. When I realized I could make actual roll and cut cookies with Keto Chow, I got really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little too excited, but that's okay. Um, so it occurred to me, why not make gingerbread cookies? Because we are going to actually roll out the dough and cut it out and have perfect little shaped cookies. Um, and actually, I'm using uh, the pumpkin spice caramel for this, but it also works really well with the eggnog and the snickerdoodle. Those all work really well with the spices and uh, you know the flavor profile here. So we're going to just start by making our basic cookie dough. And this works with all of the flavors. So you could make any flavor you want, chocolate, the cookies and cream, on and on, banana, chocolate, peanut butter and then just change your flavorings. So, but we're gonna use a lot of spices today to make it a really good, strong gingerbread. And like most cookies, we're gonna start by just beating our butter or whipping our butter. This is a stick or half a cup of unsalted butter. And of course the butter was at room temperature, so it whips up nicely. And now we're gonna add in our sweetener. Mm, yes, your sweetener, <laughs> then your eggs and your vanilla. Yeah. And this is a brown sugar style erythritol sweetener. Let's give it a little of that molasses flavor. And so I'm going to say what I've said in other recipes, beating the butter, beating the eggs, beating whatever it is that's your main ingredient or your starting ingredient is actually something you want to spend a little more time and attention on than you might think. So as I beat air into this butter, I am lightening the cookie dough. When I, you know, when, as I start to build the cookie dough, it's going to be a nicer, lighter, Power product with more volume and easier to work with. So you actually want to spend a little time on this and, and whip your butter well and whip it with the sweetener well. I'm going to add an egg. I was just going to ask you, is there a reason to keep to whip it so long? I'll take that. We, when you're baking, you tend to sort of just gloss over that. This is my vanilla, right? That is your vanilla. Too. <laughs> and then what you have is hard clumps of butter that don't mix into your cookie dough. And it's hard to work with and then it, it just bakes out as grease and it's not incorporated into the dough.
spatula. Sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> your eggs, when you add your eggs in, or egg, as the case may be, thank you very much, it's going to look curdled all over again, and that's fine. That's not, that's going to be solved when you add in your flour or your keto chow flour, in this case, our blend that we're going to use. So don't worry about that. I'm actually going to add in our spices now and then add in the rest. Fat carries flavor. So when you mix your seasonings or your spices with your fat source, and we've got cloves, ginger, nutmeg, and cinnamon. And this is freshly ground nutmeg, my favorite. I was gonna say, it smells like Christmas in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going for. So I'm just gonna beat these in quickly. And then we're going to add our dry ingredients. I have baking powder. I'm just going to add that right to the keto chow. <laughs> That's our oven. Our oven is ready. And a little bit of coconut flour. The coconut flour adds a little body to it, helps absorb some moisture, and gives it structure. It's going to help the shape hold, help them to hold their shape when we roll them out and bake them. And I'm just going to put all this in here. So. For this cookie recipe, I have a cup, a measure cup of the keto chow powder versus a scoop, which is in a lot of the recipes. So you want to measure one cup of powder or mix. And I'm just going to put it right in there, let it settle down a little bit, <laughs> and start the mixer on low. and incorporate it in there. It looks like you don't have quite enough liquid. It, it looks that way at first. As we mix it, it'll start to come together. And if you pick it up and press it with your hands, you'll see that it has started to become Cookie holding like. together, holding together, yeah, cookie okay. dough. Because we don't want too much moisture. If I put a lot of liquid in here, then they won't roll and be... Then they'll just go, go yeah. on the pan. <laughs> we'll just have drop cookies instead of <laughs> cookies that we can cut. Okay, so I can actually feel the difference now as I'm beating it. I can feel the resistance from the dough to the beaters and see it's all coming together. So I can actually stop beating this now. Depending on the kind of beaters you use, if you have a paddle beater, it'll start to just roll into a ball. But if you have smaller beaters that are fine, it'll still break it up, but you can start to just put it together. Here's our dough. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Except our cute cut cookie cutters. <laughs> and we may need to just chill this for a minute or two. It's easier to roll if it's not too warm. Okay, we'll see. and we'll be back in a minute. Hi, our dough has now cooled and we're ready to roll it out. That's right. So we just put it in the fridge for a few minutes just to help it firm up so that when we roll it out and cut it, it will hold together and not stick. And I've got two pieces of parchment paper here um, that we're just gonna roll it between the parchment paper so it doesn't stick to anything and it'll be easy to work with. I'm gonna just press it out by hand a little bit. 
And as you can see, it's a good stiff dough. How thick or are we rolling these out? What's We're the looking to get down to about between a uh, quarter inch and a half an inch. You can, it's really okay. up to you how thick you want the cookie to be. Anything below a quarter of an inch, it's not going to cut and it's not going to come out of the... We won't get it off the parchment paper? Right. <laughs> Just going to let's see. Get our little cutters out of the way there. <laughs> yeah, it's a little slippery, but that's okay. Not a big deal. I'm just trying to work in both directions so I can get it somewhat evenly rolled out. So we'll turn it now. I like to use the two sheets of parchment paper because then it doesn't stick to your pen. That's right. It doesn't stick to anything. It's great. Let's come a little closer. It is a little, a little wiggly. Yeah, I'm just going to wedge the paper between me and the counter. I'm actually going to turn it over. Make sure the parchment isn't completely... You don't want to get the parchment crinkled up and, and then pushed down into the dough. Then you'll just have... Funny little creases? Yeah, funny creases and messy. So let's see how we're doing. So we're getting pretty close there. And as you can see, the surface is real smooth. It's not crumbly. It holds together well. Let me put it back. My trick. Put it back there. <laughs> Your trick. My trick. The seek the tricks you didn't know you knew. <laughs> the secrets you didn't know you knew. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting pretty close. Come on. Sorry, can I get your I, finger? I, I got my finger in your way. Sorry. I'm going to blame that on myself. <laughs> my finger is thicker than the dough. Okay. <laughs> I think we should be looking pretty good. I got one little edge rolled out there, a little extra, but that's okay. Give it one more go, and then we can cut. So before I cut, I'm just going to make sure the parchment paper is coming off the dough so it's not stuck. I don't want to just cut them and then have, the, have it stuck to the parchment on the bottom. So this is a little bit on the thicker side, but that's just for the sake of time so I'm not just rolling this dough out. <laughs> For, we have the spatula to get them off the yeah, paper. For eternity. And our cute little shapes. And we've got all these cute little gingerbread folk. A whole little family. So we can do different sizes. You were telling me about the silicone mats mm -hmm. and that... Um, tell me again. Sorry. Well, a lot of times at the restaurant I bake on tinfoil. It's just more convenient. Uh, and our oven t tends to run fairly hot, so it's just easier for me to put it in there. But if you bake on tin foil, something like a, a cookie like this, it tends to crisp up faster on the bottom because it's in contact with that metal. So if you want a really crispy cookie, you might want to put tin foil underneath instead of a silicone mat or parchment paper. So there, that's something I didn't know that Secrets you, you didn't know. Secrets we didn't know that, and I, I was teasing her that it's secrets she didn't know she knew. <laughs> <laughs> that if we could, if you wanted that crisp gingerbread cookie, because it's like a ginger snap, a harder cookie, yeah. then you want to cook it on a tin foil. Did well, I get all of them? You have this um, little one, right? The little baby one, yeah. These are cute. I'm going to do more of these. 
I didn't think I'd be able to use my um, whirling pin again. Or, you, or I didn't <laughs> think I was going to use my cookie cutters anymore. And, you know, that was a big thing when we were young, boy. Cookies. Every Christmas, my grandmother got out the cookie cutters that she kept. You know, that was the only time of year she ever got them out. And we would decorate, and it was a whole big production. And we loved it. And we would hang them on the tree. See, that's when you need a crisp cookie because regular soft yeah. cookies are not going <laughs> to hang, hang on your on tree. tree. <laughs> All right, let's get in here. With... Can I do one more or should I do two more little ones? And this dough, can we re roll out this dough, the, the leftovers, and it doesn't turn into a brick? You can. You can definitely roll it out at least one more time. After that, it might start to get a little lumpy. Okay. But you absolutely can, so we're just going to pull this off. But you can see the texture on it's nice because it's sturdy. Oh, that came off really nice. Yeah, it? it's easier to work with than traditional cookie dough for rolling. It's actually a lot of fun, which makes it great for kids or anybody who maybe doesn't have the greatest dexterity because it's a lot easier to work with. And even if it gets a little stretched out of shape, you can just squeeze it back into shape. Um, do we have to make sure they're so far apart? Are they going to like spread out across the pan? Um, it doesn't spread a lot. We'll give them some space <laughs> to breathe. And we might want to set up, since we've got different sizes cookies, we might want to set up two trays, one for the smaller cookies oh. and one for the larger cookies, just so that they... Okay. So they bake a little more evenly. Right. So we're not burning one while we're baking the other. Um, but I'm just going to finish I think that's another up. one that falls in the... Secret she didn't Secret know you had. Know, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to finish training these up. Our oven is already preheated to 325. We'll bake them. It's going to take about 10 minutes to 12 minutes, depending on uh, how crispy we want them. And uh, we will make a glaze for them and put a little decoration on them. And we'll have gingerbread cookies. Hi. We are making a little glaze to go with our gingerbread cookies. Yeah, this is real simple glaze that we're going to make so we can decorate our cookies. You can color this uh, with food coloring or some sort of natural coloring if you'd like. And it's really basic. We're just going to use our powdered sweetener. This is about a half a cup. And we're going to add water or cream, something that doesn't change the color too much. Just a couple drops at a time and stir until we have a pourable or glazing consistency. We want it to stay a little thick. See, I always thought frosting had to have butter or sour cream in it. Frosting does. This is a glaze, so it's more like a liquid. <laughs> They're different. <laughs> They're different. <laughs> They're different. <laughs> So we'll see what we've got here. I'm learning all sorts of new things. <laughs> yeah. So now I've got a paste basically. So I'm just going to add a couple more drops, but just really a drop at a time until it gets to where I want it. Because you never really know how much, depending on the moisture in the air, the moisture that's already in your powdered sweetener, you never know how much it's going to take to get the consistency you want. So see how now that's turning into a glaze there. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more. And if you add too much, don't worry, just add in a little bit more sweetener, picking it back up. That's all there is to it. So this is on the thicker side. If you want it to really spread out, you can thin it down a little bit more. There you go. Just a really easy decorating tip. And now once our cookies are cool, we'll decorate. <laughs>